Welcome to Chapter 23, Part C, where we'll talk about the Universal Turing Machine. So what is the Universal Turing Machine? It's basically a Turing machine that can simulate any other Turing machine. You might want to ask, well, why do I want a Turing machine that simulates another Turing machine? Well, you actually have one. It's your computer. A computer is a Turing machine, kind of, and it simulates programs or runs programs on it. And the cool thing about a computer is you don't have to build a computer to do one specific task. You can build a computer to do uh, a general with a general purpose processor, and then it can perform lots of different tasks depending on what program you put on it. So essentially, the Turing machine it, that you want to run is coded up, and you put it onto the universal Turing machine's tape. You put some sort of marker and then you put up the input word on the tape. Now the universal Turing machine will simulate this Turing machine running on that input word and will do the same thing that this, Turing, this coded up Turing machine will do. So if this coded up Turing machine ends up halting on this input word, then the universal Turing machine will halt as well. So in this lecture, we're gonna discuss how we can build a universal Turing machine. Okay, so to build this Turing machine, first we're going to come up with its uh, alphabet or what we put onto the tape. And we're going to create a symbols that represent states. So it's S1, meaning the, the start state. S2 is the halt state. And then we have an option to have 1 million other states in a Turing machine that we want to run on the universal Turing machine. So we're going to code up uh, these Turing machines a little bit different than we did in the previous lecture. Now, we're also going to have a red version of all of our states. And then we're going to have C, which stands for character, which are the characters that the Turing machine runs on. And there's an option of having one million different characters. So we go ahead and we code up uh, Turing machines in this way. So if um, we are in state S, one and we read a character say c2 then we go to state like s100 and we write character say c150 and then we move our tape head to the right so we just like we coded up the other tree machine but now we can use single characters for the state we're in the state we're going to the character we're reading and the character we're writing and the direction that we're moving our tape head. So we go ahead and we take our Turing machine and we code it up and we put it right here on the universal Turing machine. Now we also need to code up the input word. So the input word instead of being A's and B's like we're used to will now be these C's and we can kind of create a table with the different uh, characters like C1 could be A, C2 can be B, C3 can be a dollar sign and so on. And that way we have um, our characters for our input word and we'd also have the blank be one of these characters if we're gonna use it in some way. So we go ahead, we code up our Turing machine, we get a long string of these for all the different edges in our Turing machine. We code up the input word and we put it on the universal Turing machine. Okay, so I put in a just a part, just one edge of our Turing machine. And remember all the other edges would be coded up and listed here. And it really doesn't matter the order that the edges are coded up in, just as long as we have each edge of our Turing machine that we want to simulate coded up. And then we have our dollar sign and now we have the input word coded up as well. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to insert the S1 right there in between the dollar sign and the first character of our input word. Now this does two things. It tells us what state we're in, and it also indicates where the tape head of the machine we're simulating is pointed at. The tape head is pointing at the first character. So the S1 says we're in state S1, and the tape head is pointing to the character to the right of it. So then what we do is we bring the universal Turing machine's tape head to the dollar sign and we move over until we find 
a state um, marker. So that once we find that state mark, we're going to split based on the different state markers we might have. So if we see state S1, then we go this way. If we stay say S2, we go to that way, all the way to state 1 million. So yes, this is a 1 million way split, okay? Next, we move our tape head again to the right so that we're reading the input character. And then each one of these states is gonna have another million way split. So C1, C2, all the way to C a million. So that's right, uh, as we're at to this stage, we have a million by million different states to be able to simulate this. Okay, but what we've read is the state we're currently in and the character we're reading. And now we're in a state that knows that we're in state S1 and we're reading character C3. So then we bring our tape head looking for an S1 C3 that's not in the what where we read and go to, but in the location of where uh, we want to go. So we'll move the tape head looking for that S1 C3 and we'll find it. Okay. And what we'll do, just this will just help us remember what we're doing. We're going to erase this S1 and replace it with the red version of S1. That way we could keep track of things. And now we're going to um, move our tape head this way and we're going to figure out what state we're going to go to and what uh, character we need to write. So that means each one of these million by million different states is going to have another state that will split based on what state we're going to go to and another one million split based on what character we're going to write. And then each one of these states will split another two times to know which direction we're going to move the tape head. So once we land in one of these states, now there's a lot of states. It's a million times a million times a million times a million times two different states. But each one of these states will know what, we're, what state we're in, what character we're reading, what state we're going to, what character we're going to write, and which direction to move our tape head. And just to make this a, a little bit easier, I'm going to change the, the direction to move it right so we don't move left off the end of the tape head. Anyway, so now this state knows that we're in state S1. We're reading a C3. That means we should go to state S5, write a C4, and move the tape head to the right. And there's one of these states for every possible combination of these inputs. So now we just move our tape head back over this way. We find our S1. We go ahead and we delete the S1 off. Then we find it, we go over to the next character. We erase it off. And then we add on the character that we're going to write, which is a C4. And since we're moving our tape head to the right, then we write the S5 over here. So now we're in state S5 and the tape head is pointing at character C1. And now we kind of go back to the beginning and we do the next step. So that's a lot of states, but it will simulate all Turing machines as long as there's less than 1 million states and 1 million characters that it works on. Now that is a limitation and I'm only, we're only using this limitation to make this a little bit easier to explain. There are ways that we can have more than a million and an infinite number of states. Just We just need to maybe write the state onto uh, another tape and then do a comparison between the different states uh, or something like that. And you can read more about that in the book. So let's talk about uh, this a little bit more. If we ever move into state S2, then we halt our universal Turing machine because that means the original Turing machine landed in a halt. Now, what about crashes? Well, if we move our tape head over to the right off the left end of this tape and we end up in this dollar sign, we just make sure our universal Turing machine crashes. 
because the tape had moved off to the left. Now what happens if we are in a state and there's no, uh, if we're in state S5 reading C1, there's no edge. What will happen as we're going over, bringing our Turing machine over here to find S5C1, we won't find it and we'll end up running into the hashtag at the beginning and we could cause our universal Turing machine to crash. That means that the machine we're simulating on would have crashed because it's in a state reading a character and there's no path for it to follow. So this will crash whenever this Turing machine will crash on that input. This will halt whenever this Turing machine will halt on that input. So we've now created a universal Turing machine. All right, let's come up with another new language called Matheson. By the way, these theories were, uh, were explored by Alan Turing so that's why we call the first language Alan, and Matheson is Alan Turing's middle name. And Matheson is basically Alan prime, or the opposite of Alan, the complement of Alan. And it's all code words that represent a Turing machine. Remember, Alan had all non-code words, and, and these code words are accepted by the Turing machine they represent. So Allen is all code words that don't represent a Turing machine or are rejected by the Turing machine they represent. And Matheson is the opposite. It's all code words that represent a Turing machine and are accepted by the Turing machine they represent. Well, guess what? The universal Turing machine basically accepts the language Matheson. All we need to do is take our code word, put it on, put the dollar sign on, put our code word on again, and now we'll, we'll run our Turing machine on its own code word. So we can use the universal Turing machine to create a, a Turing machine that accepts the language Matheson by just copying the code word down on the tape twice. So Matheson is recursively enumerable. So if you forgot what recursively enumerable is, you might want to go back and look in your notes. But basically it means that it, uh, it's a language that can be accepted by a Turing machine and its complement is either rejected or goes on in an infinite loop. Now we also have recursive languages. And so recursive languages means that we do not loop forever. So that's these languages here. In these languages, we accept everything in the language, but we might loop forever on the things not in the language, or we could crash. So we know that the language Allen is out here. It cannot be accepted by a Turing machine no matter what. And we know that the language Matheson can be accepted by a Turing machine that it represents. So and this is a new theorem that says there are languages that can be recursively enumerable where the complement is not. Because we have this one example right here, and that is theorem 67 in your book.